Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for a small Com C rummage video. Picked about uh, 15 cards out of my to be inventoried and added to my collection Com C pickups box. Um, thumbing through the selections for today quickly, it looks like they are mostly baseball, uh, which is actually very fitting with the season now underway. And uh, we're just gonna not waste any time, get right into it here. So we start off with a really nice 2018 Topps Chrome Pink Refractor of future Hall of Famer Adrian Beltre. This guy was one of the premier hitters of his time. Um, absolute, you know, guarantee lock to get into Cooperstown, in my personal opinion. And obviously picked this up just because uh, I am a sucker, as you've probably learned by now, for any and all Topps Chrome colored refractors. And I uh, really like the look of those pinks from the 2018 season. And I like that image also of a very pensive Adrian Beltre, probably uh, watching the batter before him, trying to determine how he's going to best uh, the pitcher or something along those lines. So cool card there. Dirt cheap, as most of these ComC pickups are. Um, here's a Devers rookie card. So I showed uh, the retail image variation rookie of Devers in my last ComC rummage. And here we have the actual just base flagship rookie card. Um, you know, the narrative here is much the same as when I picked up the retail variation. Just a big believer in this guy and his power numbers. Uh, really excited to see how he pans out this year. Uh, I do think he's like a potential dark horse MVP candidate if he gets really hot and doesn't play too poorly in the field. And it's just amazing to me. I know in 2018 they were printing a lot more cards than they were, you know, a decade earlier or even a few years earlier. But it still kind of astounds me that you can get his Topps flagship rookie for so cheap. Um, this particular copy, I think, was $2 and, and pocket change. So happy to have one of those. I have quite a few copies of that card as a sort of a big believer in Devers. Uh, he's one of the modern players alongside Xander Bogarts and apparently Juan Soto now that I collect. So happy to add another rookie. Uh, here's a cool buyback. This is from the, uh, I think, 2016 Topps Heritage release. A box topper buyback of a 1967 Topps Phillies team card. So just love these and obviously a pretty cool image there. We'll see if this one makes the Franken set or not. Um, competition has gotten pretty stiff uh, the closer that that Franken set gets to completion. Um, but if not, as I said, I do have a separate Z folio of those Heritage box toppers that that will look pretty nice in. Um, not a lot of hockey in today's um, selections just kind of worked out that way. I think this is just the first of two, um, but this is a nice canvas Leon Dreisaitl. These canvas cards are available for dirt cheap coin on ComC thanks to the EPAC promotion between Upper Deck and ComC. And uh, I won't get into the whole spiel that I usually give, but Dreisaitl is an absolute beast and one of the most underappreciated modern hockey players. He's uh, up above 50 goals this year, one of only two players in the league, at least at the time that I'm shooting this, uh, to, to reach that 50-goal plateau. Um, just continues to dominate with Edmonton, who look like they're going to qualify for a playoff spot here, so that's awesome. Uh, here's one towards my 2019 Topps Chrome Sapphire Red Sox team set. Needed the Steve Pierce. And, of course, what's cool about these, the Red Sox had won the World Series in 2018. So these 2019 cards, aside from being very, very shiny and awesome, depict the roster, you know, as it stood when they won that World Series championship in 2018, which was a very memorable one for me. Uh, here's a big sexy card. So I've shown some Bartolo Colon cards in the past and have another one here. This is a 2014 Bowman Orange. Uh, liked that he was on the Mets at the time, and the orange is definitely like a team color matching card for the Mets. Uh, this was like 50 cents or something and is uh, numbered out of 250. Really just have a small kind of side PC going with Bartolo. He's not a main focus for me at all. I would not list him if I was making a formal list of players I collect or anything, but I do browse for his cards from time to time just because he was so fun uh, to watch in the game. So happy to add another one there. Uh, here's one for the Bogart C folio. Like seeing this one, I had completely forgotten that I even picked this up, but this is a blue refractor out of Top's Finest. Uh, the lighting is not doing it a lot of justice, but love me some Top's Finest ever since the set debuted in the early 90s. And uh, can't pass up an opportunity to get a Bogart's numbered out of 150 
with some shine and uh, team color matching. Of course, blue and red uh, look particularly good as far as shiny Red Sox cards go. So pretty nice Xander there for the Xander Z Folio. Um, randomly, this guy's appeared now twice on the channel in uh, the past you know week or two, but I did a rummage of some 2013 baseball cards a while back. And in that I had a Jose Fernandez Bowman uh, Wave rookie. And here I've got his second year card out of 2014 Topps flagship. So this contains the Rookie Cup, which I love. I'm a big fan of second year cardboard. And this is of course the Target Red parallel. Um, I had shown some 2013 Target Reds in that same video where I showed the earlier Jose Fernandez. And so this is a, a nice addition to, I guess, a little mini collection that I have of someone who uh, passed away way too young in an unfortunate accident, but was a bright personality in the game of baseball for a short amount of time before he did. We're going to go vintage here for the next one. Got a 73 Tops Burt Blylevin here. And I got to be honest with you, I don't entirely remember why I picked this up, other than the fact that it's in remarkably good condition with pretty decent centering for a card uh, as old as 1973. Uh, love the kind of spring training chain link fence backdrop there. And of course, Bly Levin is a Hall of Famer. Um, I do have completed tops baseball sets from 74 through 79. And uh, 73 is the, the first one that I haven't completed working my way backwards. So maybe that was my logic here and uh, just getting a, a nice condition card of a Hall of Famer that I needed in case I ever pursue that set. Um, we flip from that to a couple of modern shiny cards here. Next, um, these are, uh, the first one of these is arguably my favorite parallel of the 2010s period. And it is, of course, the Cognac Diamond Anniversary parallel that Topps treated us to in the year 2011. And this is the Vlad Guerrero in an unfamiliar Orioles uniform. Uh, love that the Cognac is kind of almost a team color match for the Baltimore colors. And of course, he was just an absolute stud. And uh, now his son is treating us to some awesome displays of, of power at the plate as well. Um, this is not a very valuable card, but I just thought it was cool to kind of commemorate his extremely short stint at the end of his career with the Orioles. And again, a parallel that I just have a hard time leaving behind of uh, quality players. And uh, given that he will, um, you know, be remembered as one of the premier hitters of his generation, definitely wanted to grab that one to go along with all of the retired legend uh, short prints that I have in cognac format. Uh, next up, I got another Xander. This will be a quick one. Um, I've probably picked up 10 copies of this card over time on Com C when they were like 50 cents. Not usually a big fan of optic or unlicensed product in general but I will make an exception for this one year. I believe it was 2016, where the design was based on the 1990 Donruss release. Just love these cards, love the shine, a great image of Bo Bogey about to take a cut there. And uh, these look really, really nice in uh, paginated format. So I think I have most of a complete page in my Xander Z folio that's just full of these uh, silver hollows. So happy to add another one there and kind of flush out that Z folio a little more, which is getting Closer and closer to being ready to show here on the channel, so hopefully have that coming soon. Got one soccer card today. This is from the Topps Chrome UEFA Champions League release, and uh, baseball collectors will recognize this design from 2018 uh, baseball products. You can see it's really got the same design as the Beltray that we looked at to start off the video with that kind of uh, curved element here going above the nameplate. Uh, this is Adam Layana. At the time of uh, my favorite club, Liverpool, which is why I picked this up for my soccer Z, he has since moved on and is uh, applying his trade elsewhere, but uh, numbered purple refractor from a, a Topps Chrome UEFA set, numbered out of 250, was available cheap and is uh, my favorite team. As I said, I am a Liverpool fan. Uh, they are in the mix for a Premier League title, fighting Man City atop the table this year, so good timing on pulling that one out of the box to show off. Got uh, one last vintage card here. This is a 62 Tops Tony Taylor of the Phillies. Um, no real recollection or clue as to why I bought this other than I'm sort of always in the market for any vintage Tops card that I don't already have a copy of. And uh, assuming this came up in a search at, you know, very cheap price point. I am a fan of the 62 design with the, the sort of poster tacked to a 
a wooden fence type effect. I think it's very, very fitting uh, for baseball and those are nice looking cards. So happy to have a new one of those. The second and final hockey card and the penultimate card of today's rummage. Got this nice Phil Esposito out of Upper Deck Masterpieces. Um, did show one of these, I think, in the very last Com C rummage that I did. I showed a Stan Makita, um, but love, love, love this set. Uh, Upper Deck only did this set in hockey one year, sadly, probably about 15 years ago now. It was not long after I got back into the hobby, and I just adored this release. Um, another great painting here of uh, Esposito celebrating in front of the net, presumably uh, having just scored against the rival Montreal Canadiens. And a uh, funny quote, actually, since this came up today, that I've been reading a book about the Bruins Stanley Cup championship teams of the early 70s, and they had a great line in there about Phil Esposito. So he was known as like a junk goal scorer, you know, big frame. He'd stand in front of the net, get into those dirty areas uh, where other players are maybe afraid to venture and put in a lot of garbage and, and rebound type goals. And in the book, they commented on a bumper sticker that you would see uh, on cars around Boston in the 70s that I thought was hilarious. And basically it said, Jesus saves, but Esposito scores on the rebound. And I thought that was uh, pretty creative. It definitely made me snicker when I came across that in the book. And then the final card for today is a beautifully shiny card from the 1990s. This is a set that I learned about um, a few years ago now on a channel that I really admire, I've talked about before, my friend Eric at Those Back Pages. And in some of his early videos, he was showing some of these refractors off and I knew I needed to track some of these down. And I've grabbed a handful of Hall of Famers and star players in the time since. And the set is 1999 Bowman's Best. Look at how these refractors look. Um, just beautiful cards. Honestly, the video and the lighting isn't even doing this justice as great as it looks on camera, which is pretty nice. It looks even better in hand. If you've never held one of these Bowman's Best refractors in hand from 99 and you are a fan of shiny, I cannot recommend enough uh, heading out and trying to pick up even just a common player off your favorite team or maybe like a semi-star that you have memories of. They're just gorgeous cards. Um, you can see... This is when Topps was at their prime as far as etching. Um, look at the detail they gave us in that uniform, uh, in his kind of shin guard here, in his cleat, up through his helmet. The bat itself is etched. I mean, just the amount of care that went into creating this shiny beauty is just astounding. And, you know, these, these aren't easy cards. Um, the refractors are numbered out of 400 copies each. And then there are atomic refractors numbered out of 100. Um, but I actually like the plain refractors better than the atomic. I think the effect just looks nicer. Um, so, you know, 400 copies is definitely not something that I would even call scarce. But at the same time, you know, coming up on, you know, 20 plus years, not too far away from being 25 years from the release of this product. And with just 400 copies a piece, they do tend to dry up. Uh, for big players like a Griffey or someone like that, you're, you're going to pay big dough if and when you even find one. They're, they're not always even available uh, on the market. But I was able to snag that Jeff Bagwell, who was sort of one of my uh, players that I admired growing up and could really mash the ball um, in the 90s and 2000s, was able to get that for about $5, which I thought was a real steal. Very, very happy with that one. And that caps off the Com C rummage for today. As per usual, uh, clocked in around a minute per card. So I'll finish at 14 minutes and change for 15 cards. That seems to be my going rate. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed uh, some of these at least. Uh, mostly baseball today, so a little bit less variety than normal. But within the sport of baseball, we spanned, you know, from the 1960s all the way up to present day. Shine and vintage. Um, so a little bit, of, uh, little bit of everything. So I appreciate you stopping by. And uh, I will certainly be back in the very near future with more Com C rummages and more sports card content in general. Until then, stay safe, take care, and enjoy the hobby.